So according to Freud, there are three main uh, parts of our personality. You have the id, the ego, and the superego. And let's start with the id. These are your basic instincts, and it is essentially the source of all of your energy. It essentially pushes you to do things. It pushes you for survival. Remember that sex drive? That is coming right from the id. But again, it's not just driving you to have sex with anybody you meet. It is driving you to form uh, loving relationships. It is driving you to survive. It's driving you to uh, to make to achieve things. It's uh, driving you to um, do all sorts of things. Essentially, that is the engine of your personality. Is your id, and it exists in your unconscious. It is out of our direct conscious awareness but it nevertheless has a big influence on us. The id operates on what is called the pleasure principle. The id is interested in seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. So it wants to seek out pleasurable experiences and avoid unpleasant uh, circumstances. Now, can we go through our lives 100% seeking out pleasure and avoiding pain? Well, we'd probably get into a lot of trouble if we did that. We would be unrestrained. We would be impulsive. And it's really not realistic. You're not always going to be... You're going to have to deal with some pain in your life, and you're going to have to cope with it. Sometimes you got to uh, go through some pain in order to achieve something more. No pain, no gain. Sometimes you got to study for the, t for the exam and work hard and pass up the night out with your friends. Your id wants to go out with your friends. Your id wants pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. But you have to essentially cope with this and deal with this. And perhaps say, well, we can go out later if we finish our homework. And that actually is what the ego might say. Finish your homework first and then we can go out. It is dealing with the demands of reality. The id exists in your unconscious. Therefore, the id only exists in your mind. And it is essentially creating these images of pleasure and saying, I want this, I want this, I want it, I want it now. It's pushing you to do things, but it can't do anything on its own. It's living in your mind. So, the ego has to essentially serve the id. It has to serve the needs of the it. it has to deal with those needs and sometimes has to hold it back sometimes has to say no you, you can't do it it would be impractical no you can't have this car you can't afford it that kind of thing uh, so the ego has to deal with reality and but the ego's job is to satisfy the needs of the id but to do it in a practical logical way Now, when you are born, the newborn is entirely id. It's one big package of id. Why is that? Well, the newborn is entirely about getting pleasure and avoiding pain. It wants to nurse. It wants to sleep. It wants comfort. It wants, it wants, it wants. You cannot negotiate with the newborn baby. You cannot ask the newborn baby to wait 10 minutes. Mommy's busy. The newborn will cry and cry and cry. And cry louder and louder if you don't come. So, this is the id. The id wants it now. And, and it wants it now, 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 now. But now, as you grow... You're starting to develop a sense of self, and that's where your ego is. And your ego is kind of, you know, derives from the id. It allows the baby, once the baby starts being able to move around, to start getting the things that it wants. And thus we're dealing with the reality principle. The ego deals with the real world. Satisfy the needs of the id, but do it in a real world circumstance not just in fantasy like the id deals with. So at this point, 
we've got the id that wants and wants and wants and your ego that will say okay settle down I'll get it for you when it's practical what is missing in all of this is your superego which is the moral aspect of your personality your conscience just satisfying the needs of the id and doing it in a practical and logical way may not be the morally best thing to do okay even if you can do it it may not be right okay so, for example, if you are thinking about having an ex, if you are married and you are thinking about having an extramarital affair, well, of course, your id wants to have that kind of uh, have that affair. Uh, your ego's job is to say, "All right, well, let's see how we can practically do it." When you get a motel, you know, make sure you don't use a credit card. Make sure you pay only in cash. Don't give your real name. That kind of thing, and we'll create all kinds of practical ways of having your extramarital affair. So your ego will do it, keep it discreet, and allow you to have your fun but doing it in a practical way. Of course, your superego is going to have a problem with it. They say you made a vow of marriage, you know, you're put, you know, you're putting that at risk, you are you're a bad person if you have an extramarital affair, blah blah blah. Your superego is telling you what uh, you should be, you know, what is the right and wrong. And where do you learn right and wrong? Well, you learn it from your mom and dad, you learn it from your culture, you learn it from your, uh, your religious teachings. So your superego is also comes as you grow. You learn all of these of what is right and wrong. And this is where the superego now puts a check on what your, you know, your uh, id can do and basically will essentially perhaps punish you if you do if you transgress the superego will push you to do the right thing rather than the wrong thing or will push you against the you know perhaps evil desires of the id so with these three components of our personality you can see that these are not just sitting there in boxes uh, there is a dynamic to all of this. The relationship between the id, the ego, and the superego is a dynamic relationship. Uh, you can imagine any kind of scenario where uh, you know your id wants something, your ego's uh, job is to try to get it, but your superego will say, "No way, you can't do that. It's immoral." So now your ego has to essentially balance the two. Uh, and actually, there's a term for it called ego strength, is where your ego is strong enough to balance the competing uh, id and superego. So where the id wants its pleasure right now, and the superego is telling you what is morally right and wrong, and perhaps being hard on you for uh, you know, doing something which might be even slightly immoral. So you have to balance this all out with your ego. Sometimes it's okay to be bad. Uh, you can go against the superego. Uh, but obviously you don't want to make that a constant thing.